Welcome to Integrations and Observations. My name is Ali Yousefi. In this video, we'll look at the GitHub REST API and how we can monitor actions and workflow runs. We'll start with a brief overview of the GitHub API, look at the action objects, do a demo of the action objects, look at the workflow run objects, and perform a demo of the workflow runs, and talk through some use cases. So the GitHub API has two versions, a RESTful API and the GraphQL API uh, can be secured with basic authentication uh, as well as username and password and multi-factor authentication. Uh, we'll be using uh, OAuth for ours. Um, and it works with all areas of the Git GitHub platform from repos and users, uh, notifications, workflows, uh, commits, pull requests, etc. So GitHub Actions, what are they? So they are the ability, they allow you the ability to automate the execution of workflows. So think of uh, CI, which is continuous um, integration and CD continuous delivery. Uh, think of those concepts when you work with other platforms such as Jenkins, Azure, DevOps, etc. cetera. Uh, they're a combination of various jobs that have tasks. Uh, they can be run on various uh, operating systems and agents. Um, there's a marketplace that provides uh, tasks that can be leveraged to work with uh, popular systems such as Jenkins and Azure DevOps. Um, and you can also fully customize a task so you can run uh, command line and you can run PowerShell. They're stackable. So actions can call other actions uh, and they can be event driven. So they are written as YAML files, and the benefit of that is they can be managed just like any other code artifact. Uh, they can run out of the box on agents, or you can even bring your own container to run on. Uh, they can be triggered from practically any event in GitHub, not just code events like commits or pull requests, but events like milestones being uh, closed or releases being deployed, or even comments on issues. So GitHub Actions represents uh, continuous integration within the GitHub platform. They allow DevOps engineers uh, to configure workflows that can execute on particular events, uh, such as a developer checking in code, a, uh, the community maybe opening up an issue or commenting on an issue, or even a uh, deployment that has, uh, has releases or milestones attached to it. These can all trigger off uh, workflow actions which, um, like we mentioned before, are built off a uh, YAML pipeline, right? So with YAML, we can introduce uh, source control to our GitHub workflows. Uh, so if you're familiar with Azure DevOps, for instance, very similar syntax to the YAML that's used there. Um, also, what's pretty neat is that you can bring your own containers or runners uh, to run GitHub Actions, which can allow you to have maybe predefined software uh, for a fully like customized environment that you would have. Um, and so for our demo, we are working with the RESTful API to just kind of review what actions look like from the API, uh, which will allow us to integrate and uh, automate or even just, you know, communicate uh, to external systems. So let's take a look. Alrighty, in this demo, we're going to look at the uh, RESTful API and working with um, actions, just getting our head, heads wrapped around it. So if we look at actions, here, I, there's nothing um, here, but if I want to, I can go to uh, the, say, artifacts. If I had artifacts, then we would show up here. Um, if we look at the secrets, you can see I actually do have a secret for my NuGet API token, my integration there. I can see when it was created, last time it was updated. Um, I can see that if I had runners, I would see those here. Um, since I'm using the, the, the GitHub hosted ones, I could see the different uh, locations for H1, like OSX64 architecture, Linux, uh, Linux ARM, which is interesting, uh, and the Windows X64 that we have here, as well as the Linux ARM uh, 64. Um, so yeah, for the most part, we have that. And then you eventually will get into um, the runs itself, which we'll cover in the next demo. But inside of runs, I can really get into my, um, my, my uh, the runs I've had that have the different logs and, and, and artifacts that be associated with that. So moving on to workflow action runs. So each action that we showed earlier uh, has an execution 
and that counts as what's called a workflow run. Um, each run can be, say, canceled, can be deleted, or even rerun. Um, each act of run, when it's complete, will include artifacts if available, and will have logs. And so you can see at this image here, using the REST API, I can see I have uh, run and workflow identifiers. I have commit repository information. I even have the event. So in this case, I have a milestone completed. I can see that the status of the run was failure here. And I have additional, um, again, the, the endpoints I can use to get more information that we'll see in, in our demo. So here's an example of some of the, um, the API calls I can make to get additional information, including uh, the jobs that were run, the logs from the different jobs and tasks, uh, check suite so I can see what, what actually happened within the run, uh, the artifacts. If I need to say cancel or rerun a, uh, a run, I can do that. And also if I need the, the definition of the, the workflow itself, I can go to the workflow URL and find that. Alrighty, for this example here, we're gonna look at the uh, workflow logs or the runs and then look at logs, et cetera. I thought it'd be nice first to um, look at the UI and just kind of get a feel for the, the different actions we have here. We have these different actions inside of this uh, repo. And you can see we have different runs uh, that have run from yesterday, 15 days ago, um, and, and even longer if we need to go back that far. So we have these different ones we can see here um, this, you know, for instance, send to Azure queue, YAML ran and had this uh, action here. We can look at, for instance, publishing a the NuGet package for .NET uh, DLL. We could see that one ran as well. Has a uh, build that has these different um, steps inside of it here. So we could see that we, um, you know, published. Let's see, for instance, we set up a job. We dumped uh, some context. We check out code. Uh, we set up the build path, we set up NuGet, restore, uh, build the um, .NET solution, package it, and push it to GitHub. As you can see, this is documented here. We can see that um, we can dump our context, check out code, uh, set up our build path, um, set up NuGet, restore, build, uh, pack, and publish. Uh, we can see that this is set for uh, milestones that have been closed, and we're running on the Windows latest agent here. So let's go look at the API. So if I want to, I can start maybe with the the run itself. I can see, okay, what do I have here? I have the ID, I have the run number, I have what event happened, so milestone, it was completed, it failed, here's the workflow ID. Uh, so the workflow ID would tell us, you know, the uh, description. We have URLs and different URLs for uh, jobs, logs, etc. Here we have who, uh, who's, who created the commit. So you see, I have myself here is committing. Here's my message added specific call to milestone tile. Um, what the repo? Some information about the repo, uh, followers, stars, etc. Um, and then you know some URLs for different things such as the. Uh, the tags, the branches, the commits, etc. I could see the the head repo here. Um, I can see again more URLs, etc. So maybe I want to go look at the jobs. This is where it gets kind of fun. Is that with the jobs, I can see, for instance, the ID and the run ID. I can see the URL to this. I could see okay, did it complete? It did, and it failed. When did it start? on September 10th at 2243 and ended at 2245. I could see the name of the, uh, the, the job was build. And I could see that I, you know, set up, dump, all the same things we just saw in the workflow. Uh, but I can see, you know, did it complete? Uh, what order they were in? When did it start? And when did it complete? So I can see maybe some longer running ones. So for instance, um, let's say we look at the upload artifact to to GitHub, you know, took this one here, excuse me, failed. This is the upload artifact inside of uh, GitHub, but this is for the NuGet to push the package. I could see this, this, this took, you know, maybe what, two seconds to run. I can see that, for instance, packing took two. I could see, you know, building and publishing took about 20 seconds here. 
Um, and I could see, okay, this one succeeded, but the upload artifact failed um, and the complete job uh, had succeeded. And there's my check run URL. So that's with the jobs. If I wanna go logs, in this case, I don't have any logs. I can do the check run. I can see different events here. I can see the permissions um, as well as uh, information about the app and so on. Now, if I wanna to go to the workflow that ran this, I can go to the actions workflow, which is again, a URL that's provided from the run. I can see, yeah, here's the name, publish NuGet package. Here's the path to the YAML. Uh, when was it created and updated? Um, and then the URLs to it and the badge uh, as well for this one. Yeah, so I think in this example, the big one here is definitely, you know, make sure we look at the, um, the different jobs. Remember, there can be multiple jobs uh, that run on a, on a particular run. But you'll have uh, your repo, your actions, your runs, and then your run ID, and then jobs. And if you want, it, want to, you can simply, if you want to look at all the different runs and find the one you need, uh, you can do runs. But be advised, it'll, as you see, push a bunch of information to you. So maybe figure out a way to find that, that, that ID. All right, that concludes the demo. So there you have it. There's working with actions within uh, the RESTful API with GitHub. Uh, what that allows us to do is monitor actions, you know, where they're at and kind of see what actions we have maybe available for a repo, what events are registered to kick off an action. Um, so an example would be, say I had a, a pull request complete, which actually I've drawn here on this uh, whiteboard here. You can see we have a pull request complete event that would kick off an action that has jobs. In this case, maybe the job would, uh, we're looking at building a solution uh, or an assembly that we're gonna maybe push to, 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 uh, to NuGet, to the uh, package manager. So we are going to uh, install NuGet, make sure it's there, restore any dependencies that our solution has. We'll build the solution. Uh, we'll, as you see here, build the new spec and um, we'll update the package here. And so all of these uh, would basically be actions that we can run. Um, so, so some of the use cases that I find helpful with uh, working with the GitHub REST API and working with actions and runs is that I can see, you know, what exactly executed my GitHub action. Um, I can, you know, loop through all of the runs and see exactly what executed it and what was the status. Um, if there was a failure, I can read the failure logs and gain more information about what exactly uh, may have happened. Um, I could see the timings of each task. Maybe it succeeded, but my, my workflow took longer than expected, or maybe there's something I can do to help tune the workflow. Um, you know, with these, with the API, obviously we can integrate so we can, you know, notify, communicate events to external sources that something happened. Um, and we have a way to programmatically rerun um, workflow runs or, or cancel maybe long running runs or maybe ones we uh, had uh, ran um, that we didn't expect to. Well, that concludes this video. You'll find my contact information in the bottom right hand corner, including my email and LinkedIn profile. Uh, feel free to drop in, uh, drop any sort of feedback you have. I uh, look forward to hearing from you and enjoy the rest of your day.